again everyone. I'm here with a new stationery store find online and some of the items that I purchased at the stationery store. So these were purchased from Atlas Stationers and they're located in Chicago in the USA. And uh, I found them online looking for interesting new stationery supplies and they had quite a variety of things actually that I had not seen elsewhere. So I wanted to share this with you and share what I've gotten. And I also wanted to share how I am using this little Galen leather guy here. Um, so I'm actually gonna save that for last since that's kind of the, the more exciting thing. I, um, I discovered that I could use it for the purpose that I'm using it for and I was like incredibly excited. So I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. So here's the little nice postcard that they gave me uh, with their store on the front. Uh, I will definitely have to go visit this in person um, the next time I go to Chicago. I, I sometimes have reason to go to Chicago, so I'd really love to travel, but you know how it is these days. Um, but they wrote a really lovely little note, and uh, <laughs> they seem to really like Gale and Leather, so they were sharing that. And I, it's always a nice touch, I think, to have a handwritten note with your order. All right, I'll put that off to the side. And the other thing that I got, um, I mean, this is a pretty small order, but the other thing is just a few things from Filofax that I had not seen elsewhere. Um, actually, I might have seen the transparent envelope with the top opening, which is what this one is, but I had not seen the other two. Um, this one is a business card holder with the business card slots on the top, and it still actually has their little um, price stickers on it, so you can actually see how much I paid for each of these. Uh, I'm pretty sure I paid what the price is on here. Yeah, that seems about right. Um, but I, I have ha been having a hard time finding sort of uh, useful Filofax inserts for uh, personal size. So these are all personal size. And this last one was one I had not seen anywhere. And this is a little um, pen loop for a pen holder. And I didn't even realize it came with a pen. <laughs> Um, and I, you know, I don't think I paid $14.79 for this one. I think I paid less. Um, but it also has these little uh, pockets on here. I'm going to go ahead and open up this one. I won't open up these because these are pretty standard. Um, and the picture on the front shows you what they are. This one, the transparent envelope, has a slot on the top to put things down into that once it's in your little... Um, rings there. So I'll put these off to the side, but this one I thought was pretty neat. It, it came in a variety of colors and um, and it's really kind of cool that it comes with this little tiny pen. I, yeah, I, If it's ballpoint, which it looks like it is, I'm, I am not a fan of ballpoint. This uh, pen loop seems a little small, but it does seem like it'll stretch quite a bit. Let's see. Let's see if I can put... Okay, here's a Sailor... Um, junior fountain pen. Yeah, it'll fit. You just have to kind of smush it in there. And I'm sure the more you use it with larger pens like this, the more it'll, it'll um, adapt with the stretchiness. So I'm not sure what I'll do with the pen, but this little insert is great. Um, and I think, I'm not sure if this is leather or pleather or some kind, it's probably not real leather. But I chose the yellow because I thought the yellow was the prettiest. And I really wanted to put it in this notebook. So this one I have not shown before. This is a Chic Sparrow in the Carrie Harling Violet, which is no longer available. This was actually another second chance sale, uh, I don't want to say find, <laughs> surprise. Whenever you get things with a second chance sale, from Chic Sparrow, you can't pick which leathers you get. So this was another one that I got through a second chance sale. So I got it after this leather was already retired. But what I have in here, and, and I've already shown the version that I have of rings with strings in the Kilimanjaro color, which is essentially this color just um, with the, the fuzzy edges for, of the Hemingway. So I'll put a link down below to that video, but this one I have also put rings in strings. Um, I talk about a little bit more about how I did that in the other video, so I'll, I'll refer you to that for the actual how-to. 
Um, but I also found this cute little um, insert, I guess we could call it. It's, it's a little card holder, so it'll ho hold a bunch of cards, and it fits on the rings for personal size. And, oh, I can't remember the Etsy shop. It's like, it's like at the tip of my tongue. I, um, I had a really bad migraine this morning, and then I took the migraine medication that I know that works, but it also makes me a little loopy. I don't know if it's that or the actual migraine itself, but one side effect of that, I don't know if everybody has this who has migraines, but I tend to forget words or forget names of things. So it's really kind of frustrating, um, especially doing a YouTube channel. <laughs> But anyway, I will put a link to this seller on Etsy and um, they have a whole, oh, Thread and Prints. That's what it is. It's Thread and Prints. <laughs> um, they have a whole bunch of different fabrics that they offer, not just in the ringed uh, style, but they, they also have inserts for regular traveler's notebooks. Um, and I have at least one uh, for, for a traveler's notebook that, that works pretty well. But I thought this was kind of a nice insert in there because it l gives you a zipper pocket, which is nice. Um, you're obviously not going to get as deep a pocket on any of these because it has to accommodate the rings. So this is personal size rings in a B6 slim, uh, the same as the other one that I put a link to the video to below. Um, and I have not figured out exactly what I want to use this for, but I have filled it up with, well, first at the end here is the excess paper, just regular Filofax paper that I had left from using in the other one. And then I got some Tomoe River paper that was pre-punched and this size with uh, a dot grid. I put it all in here just because I didn't want to... Um, store it loose leaf and have it go everywhere but I'm not sure if I'll actually end up keeping it as this many pages because it's quite a bit I mean with with the regular Filofax paper and the Tomoa River paper it's pretty thick um, and I actually ended up moving this pen that was in the prior notebook in here because I'm gonna be doing more writing although I might end up putting a fountain pen in here just because I do have Tomoe River paper. I might as well use it. But for now, I moved it here because I wasn't using the pen with the other notebook because I kind of was using it to uh, label things and I was done labeling as for now anyway. So that's why I moved this here because it does match this leather beautifully. But anyway, <laughs> that's the long and short of why I got these because I wanted to put it in here. So I'll go ahead and open the rings and see how this goes perfect i mean that fits perfectly and for now i could just put this little pen back in here and leave it like that and it's it's fine it doesn't interrupt the other pen at all um but yeah it's kind of neat to have these all together and i still have to decide what i'm going to use this for um i had a few ideas of like cataloging different things and for a while I was thinking of maybe using it as a gratitude journal but I but I'm actually using a different journal for that now which I'll probably talk about in a different video but there you go but anyway that's the very long version of <laughs> why I got these Filofax inserts it's not because I use a Filofax but it's because I have a couple of notebooks with rings in the strings so there you go i'm going to go ahead and put those and the other filofax inserts which i'll put in later off to the side and now to the finding that was really really fun okay so this is a little wallet i will put a link i'll put a link directly to the atlas stationer store and their listing for this because I had um, not found it elsewhere other than, of course, on Galen Leather's website, which I've already kind of talked about in other videos, how I prefer to buy the Galen Leather products from people who are not Galen, <laughs> just because I know that they're gonna actually ship it to me and there's not gonna be um, that kind of problem. And then it's just whatever issues I have with the product and not with the shipping. Um, this product seems fine. It is, again, in the Crazy Horse Brown. So I went back and checked. Um, if you'll remember, I was talking about how um, the Crazy Horse Brown leather that I have, I have two different pen cases from them that are both supposedly Crazy Horse Brown. And I went back and looked. 
and they were both indeed labeled Crazy Horse Brown, but they're very, very different. I will put a link to both of those below. One is a 10 pen case and one is a six pen case, which I'm using for fountain pen storage. And the, as you can see from those two different videos, or maybe I'll, well, I can't remember, I don't know which of the 10 pen case videos I'll post below, but I'll post one of them because I had a, a couple. Um, but as you'll see, the colors in the two cases are incredibly different. Um, and I actually prefer this color for Crazy Horse Brown rather than the sort of more, here, I'll, I'll, I'll actually show you the, the, um, the other 10 pen case color. So this is, like I said, I confirmed that the invoice did indeed say or claim that this is Crazy Horse Brown, but it's so different. Um, this is more olivey brown and this is more orangey brown. Um, but I actually prefer the more rustic look of this one than this one. I'll still put a link to that down below. So now I'm not going to show you the, um, the details of the packing materials. It's the same kind of stuff that comes with all Galen leather products here. Uh, they give you a little thing that tells you when it was made, the color and who made it. And they give you this little, um, evil eye charm. Um, <laughs> part of the reason why I don't really profile that is because, uh, both of the evil eye charms that I got with other products actually broke like without even using them. I just took them out of the box. One was broken out of the box. One was just broke later. Um, so there you go. Uh, this particular wallet, uh, which I can't remember the exact name of the wallet style that this is, um, actually came in bubble wrap in here. I don't know if that's something that Atlas Stationers did after they receive it. It had the um, little band over it and then they had wrapped it in bubble wrap and put it back in the box. Whether that was um, Galen or Atlas, I don't know. So I'm going to put that off to the side there. I suspect that it's Atlas though because I have not received any of my other cases wrapped that way. Okay. All right. Enough chit chat about everything else. Here's the setup. So this is just a preliminary setup. I decided to try to use this as sort of a watercolor palette case. Um, I may change this around, but this was just sort of my first uh, first try at putting all this together. And it's, it's so cute and compact that I think it's gonna work great, uh, assuming I ever actually get to to travel ever again, <laughs> but it will, um, it will serve well, I think, as a travel watercolor uh, carrying case. So on the side here, I have the, um, the Traveler's Company Factory Green Fountain Pen, and I will put a link below as well to that video where I test this one out. Um, currently I have gray ink in here, which would be fine for sketching, but I do have a lot of options. I could fill up empty cartridges. This uses uh, short international cartridges. With, I could fill it with permanent drawing ink, or I could just leave it water soluble and then, um, you know, do some ink sketches that way. Even this gray ink I could probably use underneath watercolor because it's not super invasive. Um, and then the ink would just blend in with the watercolor. So those are all ideas, but this is meant to hold essentially a pocket pen. Um, I think in the pictures it shows a Kaweco sport size pen in here, so that will fit. I, I have tried my own Kaweco sport. Uh, this will fit. I have not tried any other pens. Uh, oh, I did try the Lilliput, the, the Kaweco Lilliput, and it's a little small, I think, uh, but it fits completely. Okay, so now the exciting part, opening this up. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so excited about this. It's like, you know, you put some stuff in a case and it's exciting. Uh, I'm easily excited these days. So here is the setup here. So this is a watercolor brush, a travel watercolor brush and a little mini watercolor palette that I have put in here. Um, I actually moved this from another place where I was holding this. Um, so this is the mini version of the art toolkit palette. I'll put a link to Art Toolkit below. Um, great products, they uh, hold up really well. The only downside really is that if you use it with these little uh, wells, it doesn't hold a whole lot of paint, but it's good for like a day out. 
If you were going to be carrying these as sort of your only sketching palette, I would probably bring some extra paint because you might run out if you're going on a long trip or something like that. Um, so I'll show you the construction of this inside. So it has this little area here where they show it holding like a knife and other tools. So it's basically just an empty space here. And then in the back, I have yet another watercolor palette. <laughs> So two of these fit in here. I could actually even put two larger size, but if I put the larger size on the top, then I wouldn't be able to fit the paintbrush. Um, so, and I could just fit a whole bunch more paintbrushes rather than the small, um, the small tool, tool kit palette. But for now, I mean, this is just me trying it out, so we'll see. So this is yet another palette, which is the larger size palette. Um, and these are both in the silver color. They come in silver and black in all sizes, I believe. And this was a pre-curated uh, palette other than the three extra colors, which quite frankly, I don't even remember what they are now. Um, <laughs> I have to test them out again. But this is the collaboration. Let me get this little thing out. So in the actual, there's a business card slot back in here in the back. And then I put this little business card thing that had the colors on it. You can see that I had it in a notebook, a leather notebook that um, had some natural oils on it. And that's what came off on this card. So this is the uh, collaboration with the person that did the Draw Your Day book. Um, I'm, I don't think this collaboration set is available anymore, but... Um, at Art Toolkit, they do all kinds of collaborations, and um, as of the time of this video, it may have already come and gone, but I had just heard that there's going to be another collaboration with Jane Blundell, so um, it's always good to check and see. It seems like there's always different palettes, uh, pre-curated palettes, and I think for the most part, they're Daniel Smith paints when they do pre-filled palettes. Um, sometimes they'll, like this has a white gouache. I'm not sure who the gouache is by, uh, but I think all of the other colors are Daniel Smith. And I think in the past there was a collaboration set that included um, one or two Holbein watercolors. But but she'll, she'll detail all of that when you look at the product for the individual um, pre-made palette. Okay, so this little wallet itself is pretty minimal because you only have this one card slot here, which I'm holding this little color guide in. And then there is a little space here that could, um, I guess in theory could hold more cards or whatever. It actually would be good to hold a business card case with actual business cards in it. Um, I think that would fit here. But I just thought that this was a really cute way of using it. I may end up taking this second palette out and just putting more travel brushes in here. Um, one thing that I did try to fit in here that did not fit was a um, was a little watercolor travel cup that was that was collapsible. Actually, let me see if I can find it so I can show you the size of it. It's um, oh. I actually don't know where I've put that now, um, but I will put a link to that down below uh, because it's a really great travel cup and um, it's it's about this size when it's collapsible and then it collapses down to about like that thick, um, but it just barely did not fit in here. So, and, and if I did fit it in here, I certainly would not have been able to fit brushes or anything like that. So the water solution will have to be in a separate container or a separate package there. But oh my goodness, I've gone on so long because I was just so excited about this little this little thing. Um, we'll see. I you know, I plan to be doing some more hiking perhaps uh, as we get into fall. So I will um, I'll see if I can actually take this out with me. Um, but it's super small and super cute, and I just think it would work really well to th toss in a backpack. And then you have, you know, all you need is your water, um, a water container, some water, and um, your paper. And you're pretty much ready to go with just this tiny little thing. All right, I'm going to stop there so this video doesn't end up being super long. So I'll put a link down below to all of the products that I uh, showed here, including these Filofax items 
uh, at the Atlas Stationer store and then um, the Galen products that I talked about and the videos that I talked about. All right, well, that's it for today. Uh, clearly, the migraine medication is making me loopy, so I apologize for that and I apologize for the rambling today, but I just was so excited about this little carrying case for watercolor that I wanted to show that to you. All right. Feel free to subscribe so you can keep track of future videos. If you thought this video was good, give me a like. And I hopefully will see you next time. But in the meantime, have a great day. All right. Take care. Bye.